A ton of people moving to the Portland metro area with a family ask us what are the best neighborhoods to live with a family. In this video, we're going to talk about it. Stay tuned to learn more. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from Portland, Oregon. And if this is your first time to the channel living in Oregon and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. We've helped so many people relocate to Oregon and move to the Portland metro area. And as real estate professionals, we love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Either way, we would love to help with your move to the Portland area. So as you might hear in this video, I am battling a little bit of a cold. So if I sound a little stuffed up, apologies in advance, but wanted to make a video about the best neighborhoods, in particular the best suburbs within the Portland metro area for families to live. And we're really looking at two primary criteria, safety and schools. Beyond that, of course, there are a ton of other criteria that you know may or may not check boxes for people. And there's a lot of intangible things too, just about the overall feel of an area, whether or not somebody is going to feel comfortable there, uh, you know, themselves, comfortable themselves, or you know, feel comfortable for their family. So this video in particular, you know, we, we do typically need to tread a little bit lightly as real estate professionals talking about things like schools and safety. So everything that I'm citing in this video is based on public data, based on websites like niche.com that have public, publicly available information around the ratings of schools and crime in particular areas. Of course, when you look at school ratings, you know, sometimes that's solely based on test scores, for example. Sometimes that's solely based on graduation rates. So not every ranking of schools, school districts, individual schools are going to be created equal. Uh, and so when you're doing research online, just know that you can get different results uh, and you know different results in different orders based on the rankings of schools. But when we look at overall quality, when we look at the typical rankings that you see online, you do tend to see you know, uh, the same top 10, top 15 schools and school districts for the Portland metro area. And same goes for safety and crime. So you can look at property crime, you can look at violent crime, you can look at a combination of those things. You can look at crime statistically as it pertains to a per capita basis, like a one in 100,000 chance that you would experience a violent crime or a property crime. And so, again, when you look at the, the suburbs that we'll talk about in this video and when you're doing research yourself and seeing additional suburbs online for the Portland metro area, you'll see varying degrees of results. But in this video, we're going to talk about the top six based on these two criteria, based on all the research that I've done and as a lifelong resident, um, I, I think I can stand by this as well. All right, so number one on the list is Beaverton. And Beaverton is a huge suburb on the west side of Portland, over 20 square miles, over 100, over 110,000 people that live there, a ton of great employers. You have like Nike and Columbia Sportswear and Tektronix. Down the line, you're also right next to Hillsboro where there's a lot of other job opportunities there as well. This is by and large considered to be the Silicon Forest. So a lot of tech jobs, things like that. So Beaverton is naturally a place that a lot of people flock to when they're moving to the Portland metro area. In fact, a lot of people that are moving here, relocating for employment, a pretty good chance that they're going to be working in Beaverton or in Hillsboro. So Beaverton is an area that a lot of people start looking in right out of the gate. Now Beaverton itself, again, it's enormous. So really when you look at you know, this category of best suburbs for families, it's really going to depend on where in Beaverton you live. And when you look at some of the top areas online to live for families in the Portland metro area, there's a lot of areas that get listed that are actually unincorporated Washington County, but are right on the fringe uh, for Beaverton. So we're looking at like West Slope, we're looking at Raleigh Hills, Oak Hills, Rock Creek, Bethany, Cedar Mill, Cedar Hills, Bonnie Slope. 
A lot of these areas are just outside of the city limits, but again, they are in Washington County. And most importantly, and in, in particular in the context of this video, these are all going to be in Beaverton School District. So there's a ton of areas in and kind of surrounding Beaverton, in some cases uh, enveloped by, uh, by Beaverton city limits by and large that aren't necessarily within city limits but are going to be considered to be Beaverton. Again, overall Beaverton is a really big sprawled area with mostly a suburban feel. You can get a little bit of an urban feel in particular in areas where you are really close to major highways. So you have like Farmington and TB Highway, Beaverton Hillsdale Highway and Canyon. You have Highway 26 um, and a lot of other main roads, main thoroughfares, Murray, Walker, uh, Allen, that uh, if you live within a block or two of these main roads, you know, or even within like a five block radius, um, of some of these main thoroughfares, it's going to have a little bit more of an urban feel. There's gonna be more multifamily, there's going to be more apartments, there's going to be more commercial development, stores, shopping, things like that. So it's going to have a little bit of a different dynamic than that kind of traditional suburban feel that you would think of. But overall, Beaverton has over 90 parks. So just about anywhere in Beaverton that you would live, you're gonna have access to uh, pr probably a great park. There are some really big parks, there are some smaller parks that are just about a city block and everything in between. You have the uh, THPRD, so the uh, Tualatin Hills Parks and Rec, uh, they have a ton of community centers, swim centers, uh, all, all throughout Beaverton. They have a lot of great programs for kids too, like art classes and gymnastics and basketball and y you name it. So uh, there are a lot of great opportunities for families, for kids, a lot of great areas and uh, green spaces to get out and walk around. Um, and a lot of areas that again are really highly rated when you look at being low on crime and being highly rated uh, for schools in Beaverton. And the median sale price in Beaverton right now is $502,000. Now in some of the areas that we mentioned like Cedar Mill, Bonnie Slope, uh, Cedar Hills, Oak Hills, Raleigh Hills, Rock Creek, a lot of these areas, the median sale price is gonna be probably up closer to about 650 dollars to $750,000. Um, so you definitely pay a little bit of a premium to get into some of the areas that do rank a little bit higher for some of these categories. But, you know, I think you can find a deal in Beaverton, maybe more so than in some other areas, to and, and be in an area that feels comfortable, feels safe, and has schools that you feel good about. All right, next on the list is Lake Oswego. So Lake Oswego is an area that if you are moving to the Portland metro area, you undoubtedly have heard of it. It definitely has a reputation. Uh, it's preceded by its reputation of being uh, more luxury style living, more upscale, uh, more of a wealthy area, higher end, luxury real estate, you know, all of these catchphrases I think that uh, you could use to define Lake Oswego, it's definitely a very desirable area. Some people don't like Lake Oswego. Some people drive around, spend a little time there and just you know, feel like it's not for them. Uh, whether it is just you know the aesthetic, the lifestyle, it's a very wooded area. So you'll be in a lot of areas of Lake Oswego that don't have great natural light, for example. Uh, but overall, again, I think Lake Oswego for a lot of people is at the top of the list. And one of the reasons for that is it is a great place to live for families. So Lake Oswego School District, you have two high schools, Lake Oswego High School and Lake Ridge High School, um, and all of the schools that feed into that. So it has its own small school district, which probably you know gives the opportunity for you know more parent involvement, more homogeneity across the board as far as people being on the same page and kind of, you know, the community supporting and kind of being in the loop regarding the school district overall. There's some other areas on this list like that that we'll talk about. Beaverton School District, you know, has probably, you know, 100 plus different schools across the board, Lake Oswego, you know, they're gonna have maybe a dozen, a couple dozen schools overall. And Lake Oswego is really highly rated on crime, being that crime is going to be a lot lower in Lake Oswego than a lot of other areas in Portland or around the Portland metro area. So that dynamic, of course, you know, definitely makes it an attractive place for families to move into. Now, I think for at least a lot of people, 
uh, one of the biggest roadblocks or kind of barriers to entry into moving into Lake Oswego is the housing cost. The median sale price in Lake Oswego is $787,000 right now. And that's going to be well above pretty much anything else in the Portland metro area. There's going to be smaller communities, smaller slivers, um, you know, smaller unincorporated areas like Dunthorpe, for example, just neighboring to the north of Lake Oswego that are going to be a little bit more expensive. But for its size, Lake Oswego is definitely the most expensive place in the Portland metro area to move to. I should mention too that when we talk about median sale price, and we'll talk about that for each of the suburbs in this video that we're going to talk about, the median sale price typically reflects the cost of a starter home, more or less. So in like a Beaverton being around $500,000, that's about the cost of a starter home. Uh, really five hundred to $600,000, you're looking at you know a three bedroom, 1500 square foot house. Similarly in Lake Oswego, three bedroom home, maybe 1500 to 2000 square feet, that's gonna be around 700, maybe $750,000 uh, for, for most properties that, that meet that criteria. So it really only goes up from there in terms of what a lot of people generally are looking for. All right, next we'll talk about Sherwood. So Sherwood is definitely a place that it, it wouldn't take long if you were driving around Sherwood to really observe. This is definitely a family friendly area. Sherwood itself is about as far west as you can get, about as far southwest rather, as you can get in the Portland metro area. And so it's really removed. It has more of a small town feel more than anything. So if you're looking for more of kind of sub, of a suburban rural uh, dynamic, you're definitely going to get that in Sherwood, just about in any direction aside from uh, northeast uh, that you go in Sherwood, you're going to be out in the country. I mean, this is wine country out here, there's farms, there's a lot of timber. And so definitely a beautiful area, definitely more of a small town living feel. You could be in Sherwood and really not feel like you're in a major metro area, which technically you are, but on the other hand, I mean, it's gonna take you about 40 minutes to get up into Portland probably, and you're about as far away as you can get from the Portland airport. The per Portland airport uh, PDX is uh, a little bit east, but about as far north as you can get in Portland. And again, Sherwood, about as far southwest as you can get. So complete opposite ends of the Portland metro area. So getting to the airport, getting up into the city, getting up into Portland, you know, for events, for work, whatever it may be, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult on the commuting side. Now Sherwood has just one school district, has its, its own standalone school district, uh, Sherwood School District, and there's a brand new high school there. And one of the most beautiful high schools in all of the state, you know, probably just because it's newer, there's a lot of older high schools around the Portland metro area. Um, you know, some maybe a little more run down than others as far as kind of when they were built and how much maintenance or remodeling they've gotten. But Sherwood High School built just in the last five years or so. Um, in incredible, it's beautiful. I, I think if you were shopping around and moving to the Portland metro area and Sherwood was an area that seemed interesting, maybe seemed a little bit far, but if you saw that high school, that could be something that actually sways people because it is pretty incredible. And the median sale price for homes in Sherwood right now is $631,000. All right, the next one we'll talk about is really kind of a two for one, well, really kind of a three for one, West Lynn, Wilsonville, and an area called Stafford. Now these are grouped together because they share a school district. So West Lynn is just south of Lake Oswego and Wilsonville is as far south as you can get in the Portland metro area, and it's right on I-5. And in between West Lynn and Wilsonville, you have an area called Stafford, uh, which is really kind of open rural space, but you have these big luxurious estates mixed in there. Stafford is probably as high of a concentration of wealth as anywhere you can get in the Portland metro area. Uh, West Lynn does have a little bit more of an upscale feel, uh, and Wilsonville has more of kind of a new shine to it. This is an area that has really developed over the last 25 years, 30 years, and there's still building there. You have big planned communities like Villebois, for example, that a lot of people really like. These are areas that are really sought after, regardless of where they may sit in the Portland metro area. 
you know, somebody might want to be a little bit closer to the city, but they go through an area like Wilsonville where you have these nice new developed uh, developments uh, and planned communities. That's definitely something that sways people to being closer to like 30 minutes away. Uh, but again, the, these are two areas that, uh, although there are some similarities, Westland is going to be a little bit older and a little bit more established, but Westland too, you have a lot of open space surrounding it, in particular to the south and to the west, and they are still building in Westland as well. I think in, in Wilsonville, Wilsonville has a little bit more of kind of a sprawled suburban feel to it. It doesn't really have a town center. It doesn't really have kind of an old town, small town feel to it. Westland definitely has that dynamic a little bit. Um, again, Westland is a little bit older in a lot of areas, in particular when you look at the downtown Willamette area, which is as far south as, in Westland as you can get really cool uh, restaurants and, and there's some bars and shops and they just put in some food carts. So that's a really popular area for people to go out and grab dinner, go walk around. And around that neighborhood and around that area, you have some uh, much older developments like you know, 50, 60, 70 plus years uh, uh, older homes uh, in, in this area. And Westland too, I believe in 2021, um, but probably still holds true because they do tend to be there just about every year, was ranked the safest city uh, in terms of crime in all of Oregon. So if you're looking for an area that has great schools, low on crime, a little bit more removed from the city, uh, you know, has that small town charm a little bit and really just feels like an area that is very family oriented. West Lynn would be a great option as well as Wilsonville. So the median sale price right now in West Lynn is $662,000. The median sale price in Stafford, in the Stafford area, 1.3 million. Median sale price, mind you, 1.3 million. And the median sale price in Wilsonville is $632,000. All right, moving right along, we're gonna talk about Tigard and Tualatin, another two for one. And these are two suburbs that are connected to each other, Tigard to the north, Tualatin to the south. Tigard is almost touching Portland, south on, on the southwest side of Portland. Uh, and then just below Tigard is going to be Tualatin. Now these are two suburbs of about similar size. Um, Tigard's probably a little bit bigger. Tigard is a little bit older. Tigard is a little bit more sprawled. Tualatin is a little bit more insulated, a little more dense in terms of the suburban development because uh, Tualatin was really developed in the last 30, maybe 40 years. And when you have you know newer development and most which most of Tualatin is, you're going to get smaller lots. So a lot of people you know will describe Tualatin as a little bit cookie cutter. You can get into some neighborhoods where a lot of houses look pretty similar. They're very close together, but they have sidewalks. They have great parks. You know you 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 drive around and you see kids playing in the street, riding their bikes. There's cul-de-sacs. You know so there's a lot of redeeming qualities, and not every neighborhood in Tualatin is like that. Now in Tigard, it's really gonna depend a little bit more on where you live. There are some unincorporated areas with a Tigard address. Again, just like we were talking about in Beaverton, unincorporated Washington County, areas like Metzger, but probably most notably an area like Bull Mountain, which is an area about as far south and, and as far west as you can get in Tigard. Bull Mountain, just like it sounds, it, you know, you're up on a mountain. So if you go down Highway 99 on the right hand side, you can see it there and then you drive up into Bull Mountain, you know, up Bull Mountain Road and there's a few, you know, kind of main thoroughfares there on Bull Mountain. This is an area that was developed a lot more recently. This is an area that is very quintessential suburbia. Uh, they're still developing, they're still building in this area. You do have some older streets, some older homes in this area, so you can get some mid-century modern, up to 100-year-old homes. Uh, and you are pretty close to some rural areas. So you actually start to bump up against that urban growth boundary, especially when you start to go west and a little bit south. Uh, these are areas that, again, are developing. There are areas that are still getting built out, but you can get out into the country very quickly. You can get, get, get out to wineries. Um, this area is really just north of, north northeast of Sherwood. So there are some similarities there. But when you, when you look at Tigard overall and you look at the ratings on niche.com, Metzger, Bull Mountain, King City, these are unincorporated areas, but 
basically considered to be Tiger. They feed into Tiger High School, um, are all in the top 20 uh, for the best suburbs or best areas for families to live in the Portland metro area. Again, primarily looking at crime and school rating. So it's not just proximity that tie together Tiger and Tualatin, although you know they are very close and in some areas uh, a bit integrated especially when you get uh, closer to I-5. There's not necessarily a, a, a clear delineation uh, as far as where one begins and where one ends. But we're mentioning these two together in this category because they share a school district, so the Tiger Tualatin School District. Um, so this whole area all feeds into the same schools, but you have two primary high schools being Tiger High School and Tualatin High School, bitter rivals, arch rivals, by the way. Um, again, in Tualatin, you're going to get a, a little bit of a newer, much more suburban feel in, in a lot of areas of Tualatin than in Tigard. And again, in Tigard, it probably depends a little bit more on where you live. I don't know if there's necessarily a quote unquote bad area of Tigard based on these measures, but there are areas that do rank a little bit higher. One of the strongest defining characteristics of Tigard is you have Highway 99, which is a, a big major highway in the Portland metro area that runs right through the middle of Tigard. So from the north end of Tigard to the south end of Tigard, you have a ton of commercial development. There are some office buildings, grocery stores, shopping, restaurants, all that stuff. And again, when you're in these more commercial areas, you'll get more multifamily, more apartments, things like that. There's gonna be less consistency when you look at kind of the uh, prototypical, you know, family suburban type neighborhood uh, in some areas of Tigard. Again, in Tualatin, it's it's going to be much more uniform. All right, so looking at Tigard and Tualatin as far as what you can get for your dollar, the median sale price in Tigard right now, $569,000. The median sale price in Tualatin, $657,000. Um, so a pretty big gap when you look at median sale price for areas that are really by and large one and the same uh, in terms of being in the same area and their proximity to other things in the Portland metro area. Spend some time in these areas and it wouldn't be hard to understand why there is that discrepancy in median sale price. Both areas are great, both areas very sought after. Uh, in particular for people who are moving to the Portland area with families. All right, last but not least, we're going to talk about Happy Valley. So Happy Valley, probably more than anywhere else in the Portland metro area, is quintessential suburbia. But you're also in this area that is this suburban sprawl out on the east side of the Portland metro area in Clackamas County that has really been developed over the past 20, 25, 30 years. So a lot of areas in Happy Valley, in fact, most areas of Happy Valley, um, aside from the areas that are a little bit closer in, in what was once considered to be Clackamas, are going to be nice new big homes. You ha have a lot of really big houses in Happy Valley. So your cost per square foot is probably going to be a little bit less in that you can probably get a little bit larger home in an area like Happy Valley you are going to be a lot further away. A little bit quicker access to the airport, um, well, a lot quicker access to the airport than an area like Sherwood, but you're about as far away from downtown Portland um, as you are in Sherwood in Happy Valley. But Happy Valley itself, a lot of great parks, you know, very low on crime, highly rated schools, not as high as some other areas on this list, but again, you spend some time in Happy Valley, drive around, you're gonna get that suburban feel, you're gonna see parks, you're gonna see cul-de-sacs, you're gonna see kids playing, and uh, there's a lot of great amenities too, you know, so um, although you are a little bit removed, you don't have to travel too far, you know, for your shopping as far as getting to a Target, getting to really any type of grocery store that you would need. And this is an area that right now is one of the fastest growing areas in all of Oregon and in the Portland metro area. This is an area that is really nice, you know, just aesthetically. There's some nice elevation changes. It's nicely wooded that you can get some great views of Mount Hood, because you know, especially because you're, you're a little bit further east, so you're a little bit closer to the mountain. This is an area that's probably really going to hold its value in terms of an investment long term because it's already established this character of being an area again with larger nicer homes an area that families flock to and ultimately an area that people want to live in so in Happy Valley you're going to be in the North Clackamas School District and the median sale price right now in Happy Valley is six hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars so pretty on par with the Wilsonville's and the Sherwoods 
and the Twal and Tualatin uh, is is pretty close as well. Now, when you look at Wilsonville, Sherwood, Tualatin, Happy Valley, these are areas that really have blown up and uh, been developed. Um, you know, more or less in a similar uh, timeline. Tualatin is a little bit older than some of these areas, being a little bit closer into Portland. You know, again, uh, like we've talked about, you know, things kind of sprawl out, you know, from the city as that center point. And I think with all of these areas, you can get a lot of similarity. So, you know, you probably can't go wrong if you're prioritizing moving with a family, looking for great schools, looking for an area that's low on crime. So it's really going to be, what are the things that fill in the blank, you know, and what are some of the intangibles that you're looking for in an area? What's your commute to work going to be like? Do you want to get to the mountain? Are you an avid skier? Do you want to get to the coast? You know, do you like getting out to the ocean? Well, you know, you're going to be an extra 30 minutes in either direction, depending on where you live. And really that's where we come in. And if you are thinking about moving to the Portland metro area and you wanna talk about different suburbs, different areas that you feel like could fit your lifestyle and, and suit your needs, we can make suggestions. Of course, come to us with areas that you feel like sound interesting and we can narrow down a list, start looking at homes, and looking at the possibilities. And again, if you are moving to the Portland metro area, make sure to give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video. Schedule a Zoom call with us and we can have that conversation. We can talk about your budget and your timeline, what your priorities are, what you're looking for in an area, set up a home search for you so you start to get a feel for the market, and ultimately put together a game plan for you so we can hit the ground running when the time comes. If this video was helpful, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you want to get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we really appreciate you watching. And until next time, we'll talk to you later.